Hi, my name is John Lonham. I'm a mineman. I want to talk a little bit about my mine history. I come from uh, Freeport, Long Island, New York, about 30 miles uh, east of New York City. Kind of the country folks, not city folks. Uh, I joined the Navy because my uh, two older brothers had preceded me. One of them had just uh, uh, completed his, his sixth year, and the other one was just about his third year. They were both kitty cruisers. I was a. I waited until after eighteen to join because I was waiting for a high school buddy. I graduated from Freeport High School, Freeport, New York. I went to uh, boot camp, Bainbridge, Maryland. From Bainbridge, Maryland, I was just, uh, went through uh, classification. They asked me, uh, based on my scores that I had achieved, what I want to do. Do I want to be a mineman, a torpedo man, or a machinist mate? And I said, well, I'm interested in electricity. And they said, well, mineman would be the thing to do. And I went to mine school. Uh, interesting, um, on my trip to mine school from Bainbridge, I went, took the train to Baltimore, Maryland. From Baltimore, I went to Richmond. Richmond, I had a three hour wait uh, uh, in the uh, Richmond Railroad Station waiting uh, for the train coming to the peninsula where Yorktown was. And I got my, I was a New York uh, resident. And I'm going to say we were uh, high school fully integrated. Got to the Richmond uh, Railroad Station. And I was shocked to see the signs reading whites only on the water fountain, white men and white women for the restrooms. And colored had to use only one restroom for both. Uh, the train going down to the uh, Yorktown segregated. It had different cars for blacks and whites. It was quite an experience, uh, shocking to me as a young 18 year old. Went to mine school. Mine school, uh, three in my class went to the submarine tenders in. Uh, San Diego, California, where we, uh, uh, the mine shop was ashore at Point Loma because there was not enough room on the ship to do the work. Uh, back then, they were called drill mines. They weren't called exercise and training. Uh, drill mine, the Mark 10, uh, where they had just a case and an anchor. Uh, they fired it out, torpedo tube. Did not use the hydrostat. It was allowed to come to the surface where it locked, and then they retrieved it and brought it back in, and we overhauled it, and so it went. The uh, two of my classmates were uh, George Clark, uh, who retired and, as a mineman, and Dave Clark. He retired as a chief. Uh, and he was pretty much in the sports rather than in the mines, but he retired as a chief mine. Lives in Idaho today. George lives in Pensacola. Okay. Uh, the chief was, uh, chief mine was Chief Percy Phelps, who was uh, the only mine. We had three other torpedo men. One of the torpedo men, his name was Hyder. He changed his rate to Miman and went on to uh, get into the mine game. Uh, from Point Loma, I, was, I got a big transfer across the, the uh, harbor there onto North Island. North Island was a naval air station. Uh, they had, we had uh, 100 mine men were stationed at North Island. It was a manpower pool and the place where they kept the mineman that had finished their overseas shore duty and needed to finish their uh, one year or so left in the Navy. 
the uh, mines were Mark 25, Mark 36. Uh, again, drill mines. The airplanes were the P5M uh, seaplanes, which had wheels that had to be attached. So they towed them around on the ramp and uh, for parking on the uh, airstrip and actually had to put them into the water with a tractor. And then it took the wheels off the side of the plane and then it, it did his mission. Uh, but we were, they were, uh, they also had a job as a, as a mine layer. From there, I went to uh, NAD Westlock, which was uh, Ammunition Depot. And it was all depot work where we did things by the pallet load instead of by the individual. individual. There was a lot of uh, uh, several weeks of work of testing one component at a time. The only, uh, uh, back to North Island, the only chief I can remember was Chief J.J. Ireland. I don't know if anybody remembers him. Uh, back to Westlock, Chief, uh, when I remember is Chief Smith, but I do remember Ed Sprecher, Don DeCrona, and Billings were uh, all first class at the time. And uh, if you look back through your uh, uh, Myman page, there was a letter from a Waldo Cook, who was the next Myman. And he was the, uh, uh, the the field officer for the for the mine in there at, at Westlock. Uh, they did a few plants of Mark Twenty Sevens and Mark Sixes, but there was not any uh, uh, anything particular as far as mines went. From there, I re-enlisted uh, receiving station in New York as I. Uh, uh, Reenlistment invest uh, incentive, and in New York, uh, I was assigned to uh, the uh, submarine base at New London, Connecticut. Back to the Mark Ten again. Uh, the chief there was Al Latta. Latta was famous for when he was the chief master at arms at Yorktown. He took uh, and set up a couple of search coils and use them and some relays and time and had his master arm force timing cars that were exceeding the 15 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, from North Ireland, I mean, from uh, submarine base, New London, went to Malta. Malta was a, a rural air force uh, air base. And it had mines that had come from Port Laoti in uh, French Morocco. There we had Mark 10s, Mark 25s, and Mark 36s. And most of the work was working the uh, drill mine 25 and 36. We did explosive uh, work on the cases on the Mark 10s. Chiefs were for Dorica. Uh, Roble, Barfield made chief there, and uh, towards the end, uh, Charlie Dorr came in as the chief, and Charlie Dorr was an ex-torpedo uh, man, changed the rate to Miami. From there, I went to a submarine tender in Key West, Florida, the Bushnell. I was there for uh, about six months, and I was shanghaied to by Ed Sprecher, who had who was the division officer at Key West Test and Evaluation, Key West Tebdet, uh, in Key West, where they eva they evaluated new mines for the Navy, and they evaluated new mine sweeping gear. So we worked the brand new mines. And then we also work all the Navy's mines 
because of the, the, the minesweeping commitment. Uh, one of the biggest projects we had there was line charge, where they took a uh, uh, took rope, 21 thread, put C4, uh, first off, they, they put uh, Primacord down the strands of the rope. Then they put Primacord, I mean, uh, they put uh, C4 uh, packets all along the rope and put a sleeve over it and it looked like sausage. They used to, uh, it, it was designed to be used out of an LS, LS, no, out of a mic boat with a, a rocket launcher. The uh, line charge was, we, we put all, all the mines that we had in the inventory uh, out there on a, against a base rope line to measure the, uh, uh, the distance it was from the line charge. Then they put the line charge down the center and blew it up and they saw, uh, were evaluating how it killed mines and it did an excellent job. The big explosion actually took those Mark 25 mine cases and squished them like a, 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 a beer can. Wherever there was uh, air, it, the, the case crushed. Okay, from Key West, uh, I, I made chief at Key West, a great time of my life. Chief, my, my, uh, at that time, chief was an acting appointment. So I was MNCA. You had to be a chief for uh, acting appointment for three years before you became permanent. That got changed. Uh, from there, I went to drill mine prep Long Beach, where I was uh, uh, spent most of my time in the sea nettle project. They had two mine sweepers that had the sonar. It was capable of using the uh, it was necessary for sea nettle. Sea nettle was a slow speed torpedo that um, was wire guided from the ship and it had a, a warhead on it. It also had a pinger and they would launch the thing off the stern of the ship, get it in the water and swim it out, steer it out, and then uh, bring it to the target. It had a pinger on it and you could watch it blipping as it went across the squeaky 14 sonar. And they would put it as close to the mine as possible and detonate it and render the mine safe. It's a predecessor to the ROV that they're using today. From uh, Long Beach, I made warrant officer, and my first assignment was to destroy a tender Navy. And I spent three years uh, with gunner's mates gunners made technicians and torpedo men. And I got into the nuclear game. From there, I went to uh, weapon station Yorktown in a quality assurance billet. Trouble was, I didn't have a job. The, uh, my job was to be a division officer for the Miman that was stationed at Yorktown testing components for the Mark 52 series mines. By the time I got there, they were all gone. They, they had finished the job and there wasn't anybody. So I was, in his, I was an assistant to the QA officer for two years, uh, really nothing to do. Uh, they call it an SLJO, shitty little jobs officer. And they're putting out fires and doing whatever the, the QA officer wanted me to do. But during that time, they volunteered me to go to the Philippines for three years for uh, ammunition peer safety officer. And that was uh, quite an experience. And we were running to Dick Anderson who had the mine shop at the time. And 
when my tour was up at the Quality Assurance, I went to Civic Bay on a company tour, and and I was the division officer for the M. I mean, department head for the M and T divisions in Civic. Civic, uh, we had a little bit of everything. We had fifty twos. Uh, we were supporting the fleet that was doing the stuff in Vietnam. The mines that were laid in Vietnam all came out of Subic. Durham Anderson was the one that supplied the mines. During my tour there, uh, we did battery changes for the, what was on the carriers. The carriers had a restrike or a reseed uh, commitment with uh, 52s and I think I believe they were all 52s. Anyway, we had 52, 55, but we did a lot of DST work. DSTs were continually being sent out to the, the carriers because they were, they were really using them up. Okay, from the Philippines, I was off to uh, mine engineering at Yorktown. Mine engineering at Yorktown, I did uh, Detroit Air is aviation mines type stuff uh, and new mine stuff. From there, I went to uh, Okinawa. Okinawa, I went as officer in charge of MOMAG DET 10. We had uh, my greatest tour because I was the boss and, and my superiors were in, were in Charleston. So everything was. Uh, day late and dollar short and done by messages. And it was really an interesting tour. Uh, my, my tours there, tour there, uh, Master Chief Music was the, uh, uh, my leading chief. Uh, there was uh, Chief Robinson and uh, Horton were also chiefs there. Let's see, uh, from there I went back to my engineering. So then I, I spent, of my 10 year, uh, 30, 30 years, just over 30 years, 30 years, two months, 15 days to be exact, uh, 10 of the years was at Yorktown. So I'm Yorktown uh, acquainted and I retired at, uh, across the river from Yorktown and Gloucester. And I've been here for uh, 40 years in, Jan in January, the end of January, I'll be retired 40 years. You know, that's two careers for you, some of you young folks, if you're watching this thing. Uh, I enjoyed being in the Navy, and I enjoyed being a member of the Association of Mine. I tell you something, Association of Mine, my membership card is 0002. And the number one was Joe Sapien, who passed away. So I got the senior card for the Association of Minemen. And it was signed by uh, then President Foxy Fisher and Jim Longway. Both of them passed away. I guess that wraps it up. I'm uh, happy to be a Minemen, happy to be an AOM member. And I sure wish a lot more people would join that AOM. It's not just a bunch of old fuddy-duddies and we need young blood. And I'm really upset that the seagoing minemen have not aspired to join the Association of Minemen. 